Good evening and welcome to Hawaii News for You at a fascinating time for the British nation with only four weeks to go now until the long-awaited day, Ronnie Biggs' funeral. <laughs> Elsewhere in the news this week, as the foot-and-mouth culling policy continues, government vets deny they've been affected by the excessive slaughter. <laughs> in Texas, the new Toys R Us superstore opens for business. And there's an embarrassing moment when John Prescott forgets to remove the cover from his new swimming pool. <laughs> On Ian Hislop's team is the star of the award-winning comedy series Trigger Happy TV, which the BBC, are very happy to point out, follows this programme on Channel 4 and is crap. Don Jolly. <laughs> And with Paul Merton tonight, a journalist who recently declared the most positive role model for men now is the male stripper, which we can only pray he won't attempt to prove tonight, David Aronovich. <laughs> round one has all the hallmarks of an opening round, featuring, as it does, the first four questions. Ian and Dom. Shock news. Could it back. be the election? <laughs> I think it is. Going to see the Queen. <laughs> Oh, he's amongst his people. The children of the future. Back on the streets. <laughs> Following John Major's great example from the last election. And that's the plane, the Lib Dem super plane. It Battle a, plane. It has a name, actually. Led Zeppelin. <laughs> Is it Icarus? <laughs> <laughs> uh, big Treats. banana. What? Did you say banana? Big banana, oh, isn't big it's banana. called? Oh. Well, yeah, that's what their uh, campaign bus is called, the Lib Dems. Obviously going for the under six vote there. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so you mentioned the uh, children of the future. Is yeah. that a reference to uh, the song that the kids were singing? Well, I thought it was fantastic. You saw Blair, you know, announcing the election to a group of school children who were obviously very excited to meet the Prime Minister but seemed to wonder why he was talking over their heads to someone behind them. The children were essentially props. Mm. Um, all the, uh, the journalists were kept out of view, so it was just the kids in view. And then um, Blair delivered the speech to them about issues that they might be interested in, like negative equity. Yeah. <laughs> Really big amongst school kids. I think it's very important. Talk about nothing else in the playground. And he had a stained glass window behind him, didn't he? Which yes, mm. which picked out the colours nicely on his white shirt. Yeah. So Tony could stand there. <laughs> and what's his message been? Uh, it's a very religious one, a vote for me. Vote for me, I'm God. <laughs> he did sing another hymn, which was I am the Lord of Wind and Flame. You got it half right. <laughs> <laughs> and as soon as the lights were off, he dropped the book and left. He sang while the cameras were there. It was just an amazing piece of drivel. Really. Yeah. Yeah. And what was bad about the uh, date that he's uh, suggested for the Queen, at least? She busy? <laughs> <laughs> she's washing her hair. She, no, the other thing she's, she's washing her hair. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Prince Charles. She's washing him. Is there a horse race? <laughs> does she wash Prince Charles? <laughs> he doesn't dress himself, does he? <laughs> I'll check it out and let you know. Okay. Who will he be asking? <laughs> Off in the palace. Oh, They've got spokesmen. Right, are you going to do that now? Or? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got a phone. I've got one. No, please. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, the state. What's, what's the Queen doing? Uh, the state opening of Parliament uh, will now fall on the second day of Ascot. Ah. Uh, mm. Oh, well, let's get our get priorities right. right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what about Hague? What's he been up to? because we've got to look for balance now. Um, <laughs> yeah, the really sickening to. thing about Blair... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I want to mention hay. Right, OK, go ahead. <laughs> hay. <laughs> but, I mean, that's all Blair's policy is. If anyone says, what do you think? He says, Haig. Yeah. Everyone goes, oh, God, all right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is the announcement, then, by Tony Blair that the general election will be held on June the 7th. Uh, immediately afterwards, William Haig set off on a whistle-stop tour of all winnable seats, starting with Watford, then Taunton, then... <laughs> <laughs> then home for tea. Uh, the campaign officially started on Tuesday when Mr Blair went to Buckingham Palace and spent 20 minutes with the Queen before reluctantly leaving, saying, I'll put you down as a maybe then. <laughs> uh, in the interest of political balance, we're obliged to mention what Liberal Democrat leader Charles Kennedy has been up to, so if anyone has any news, please feel free to write and let us know. Uh, Paul and David, your latest release. Yeah, this is the Pope's visit to Syria <laughs> and Greece. Yeah. There he is, there's the Pope my plane landing <laughs> yeah. at Damascus Airport. 
The other possibility is that was Ronnie Biggs. Right. What's he been up to then this week? Well, he's done a deal with the son to fly him back to Rio so his family can get a bit of money before he dies. Well, yes, that's the cynical view. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's a rather cynical man, don't you think? <laughs> and it was the son, yes, that, uh, that is responsible for bringing they him They finally over. brought him to justice, yeah. as which, they put which it. Which is a yeah. big thing they're doing. Next week, mm. Slobodan Milosevic. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, and how did the Daily Star describe The Sun this week? Shocking. Uh, a great paper. Um, <laughs> oddly not, no, a down-market newspaper is how they put it. <laughs> this, was, uh, this was in an edition which had this as the front cover. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Who else has helped Ronnie and The Sun? Robin, Robin Cook. Cook. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Give um, them a passport for one day. Well, we gave the Hindus a passport, so... <laughs> <laughs> Ronnie Biggs is fair enough. Yes, and without contributing to the Millennium Dome. <laughs> um, and were you aware of what Ronnie's been doing over in Rio in recent weeks? Advertising women's underwear. We can have a look at uh, the photo shoot. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, he's wrapped in a Union Jack. Oh. Is uh, he having a stroke in that one, or...? <laughs> This is the uh, ageing uh, great train robber Ronnie Biggs uh, returning to Britain, having escaped in 1965 after serving 15 months in prison. Uh, Biggs is hoping that his remaining sentence will be substantially reduced from the current 28 years to life. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, the Sun, spinning the story out for all it was worth, has already suggested a film based on Biggs' return to Britain. Uh, seeking the perfect physical match, they said it could star Kirk Douglas as the ailing robber. <laughs> Or if he's not available, Thora Heard. <laughs> Ian and Dom, uh, homespun pun for you. Ginger Wedman. Ah, well, this has to be Mr. Evans. I think marrying Billy Piper in um, Las Vegas. I know this because of the desperation of the Daily Telegraph. I mean, all the newspapers <laughs> at the moment are saying, you know, vote um, Blair. Except the Telegraph, which wants to say vote Hague, but, you know, they've got to sell papers, so... Um, <laughs> they put an enormous picture of Chris Evans marrying um, Billy Piper, front page of the Telegraph, enormous. <laughs> With a headline saying, there are worse things than William Hague. <laughs> <laughs> you wonder what the vows were, really, at some stage. I mean, there must have been some sort of vow about appearing in a, in a paper every single day, one or two, <laughs> vowing mm. to release singles on particularly prominent mm. dates in the wedding For the rest of their For wedding... the rest of their wedded week. So, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I mean, I kind of see his, his attraction. I, I don't really see what she, she's getting out of it, particularly. You know. Well, she got a Ferrari out of it. Yeah, but she can't drive. That's true. But Ferrari's very good to learn on, isn't it? Yeah, I suppose so. Traditionally. Learn on? <laughs> yeah. Learn on a car. Did you learn on a Ferrari? I didn't, no. What car did you learn on? <laughs> <laughs> I learned on a Fiat. Have we gone into Top Gear? <laughs> Sadly, no. no. <laughs> I think we found neutral. <laughs> so, the wedding outfits, then. Did you notice what she was wearing? A blank check. Very little. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she was wearing a sarong with uh, pink and green flip-flops. <laughs> Very nice. Very Beckham. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's uh, Billy's middle name? Tone deaf? I don't know. <laughs> Is it, uh, is it pied? <laughs> uh, it's even more is extraordinary than that. It's not bag, Piper, no. no. <laughs> um, Henry. It is a boy's name. Uh, Lone. Chris. Slightly closer to... Um, Angus. No. <laughs> we'll get there in the end if you keep going, going around this way. David. Paul. Paul is the right Paul. answer, yes. Paul? And what does Paul mean? Well, I think it means poor, shy. Does it mean shy? It means small. <laughs> 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 Not in stature, though, eh? <laughs> no, heaven forbid. Uh, yes, this is the wedding of Billy Piper and Chris Evans in a surprise ceremony designed to wrong-foot the British media, as reported in every national newspaper. <laughs> According to the Daily Star, Billy appeared to have put on a bit of weight, but denied rumours that she's pregnant, so Chris remains the only one with child. <laughs> After news of the wedding was leaked, messages of congratulation flooded in from the church manager, Greg Smith. I hope they'll be very happy together. From Virgin Radio, we wish Billy and Chris every happiness. And from Evan's ex-wife, Carol McGiffin, who also added her sentiments. <laughs> <laughs> Paul and David, your uh, extraordinary claim. Private eye in poodle snatch. Strange place to hide. <laughs> The 
Is this a, a sad custody story? Some chap who's estranged from his wife, uh, they're fighting about who gets the dog, and uh, he sends a private eye to find out where the dog is. She said about him, the wife, he threatened to strangle me and the dog, to which he replied, I wouldn't touch that dog. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and what is the dog? It's a poodle. It says it there, look. <laughs> It's, uh, it's a poodle-like dog. It's not actually a poodle. It does impressions. <laughs> it's, uh, is it a Shih Tzu? No, it is a dog. It's, um... <laughs> it's a Bichon Frise. Have uh, you got a picture of it? Uh, we have, yes. Oh, look at that. This isn't actually Sophie, uh, which is the name of the dog in question, but this is one that's like Sophie. Have you ever dressed up as a dog, Dom? Uh, not me. Right. Occasionally, yes. <laughs> you dressed up as a bear, didn't you? What was that to... Um... I have been a bear. I did actually stand at the last election as uh, Ted Bear. I stood in Kensington, Chelsea, against Alan Clark, um, and we came fourth, which means that my party, the Teddy Bear Alliance, is now the fourth most powerful political presence in Kensington, Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> what were your policies? Uh, say no to fleas was a very big one. <laughs> Uh, this is then, yes, the custody battle over Sophie the Bichon Frise. Uh, Frank and Andrea Hannan were their names. They both claimed uh, ownership over the dog and were in court this week after Mr Hannan hired a private detective to track his wife down so he could snatch the dog back. Uh, according to one expert, Bichon Frise are a small poodle-like dog, very popular due to their size, especially in Korea, where they fit neatly into the microwave. <laughs> So, uh, at the end of that round, according to the latest poll, both sides are already faring better than Charles Kennedy, having, as they do, four points. <laughs> Two this week salutes four glorious years of new Labour achievements and highlights why an even bigger election victory for Tony Blair this time is not only inevitable but also inexplicable. Uh, so, fingers to your buzzers. Uh, question one, who said this and about what? They may not revolutionise your life, but they can make Britain better. Uh, Paul and David? We don't know. <laughs> um, Ian and Dom? We can don't you know do either. Any... <laughs> <laughs> uh, shall I give you a clue? Okay, yeah, go on. He's the Prime Minister of this country. Jack Chirac. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a tough one this round, I can feel it. Uh, Tony Blair's his name. Uh, at the last election, uh, he said it about uh, Labour's five election pledges. Uh, how many have been achieved? <laughs> Paul and David? Three. Is the right answer. Next, how does Mr Blair account uh, for uh, the number of pledges that haven't been achieved? <laughs> Paul and David? By the fact that they haven't had five years, they've only had four. This is the right answer. Oh, Very well, good. Uh, the pledges were only supposed to be honoured over a five-year period. Well, whose fault is that? He called well, the, the election. The election. Four. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if it hadn't been for opposition, the House of Lords, they'd have all been fulfilled within four years instead of the five they originally promised. Yes. Right. Do you see? You're a Tory, yeah. aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> You're a communist, aren't you? A very, very right-wing communist. Right, OK. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Where does that leave you? Lib Dem, I think, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, according to Lord Irvin, uh, what might have fallen down almost as soon as it was put up? Paul and David? And Widdicombe's drawers. <laughs> <laughs> His wallpaper. Yeah. Um, a certain kind of wallpaper. Flop. The cheap the cheap yeah, wallpaper. The cheap that he did B and Q use. wallpaper. Th that is correct, yes. The ordinary wallpaper, the as ordinary opposed wallpaper. to the hand printed ah. double flock paper chosen by <laughs> Lord Irvin, uh, which cost taxpayers sixty thousand uh, pounds. how did one interior designer describe the colour scheme in Lord Irvin's office? Like a tarts <laughs> boudoir. <laughs> <laughs> like a like an Indian restaurant. Uh, not like an Indian restaurant either. Like a tarts Indian restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, dull, muddy, boring and ostentatious. Um, what incident last year led Tony Blair to admit he was terrified? Facing the WI. It was the warm reception he received from the Women's Institute Conference at Wembley. I've spent a long time working on the National Health Service. <laughs> Slow hand clapping started. This is the most terrifying audience I've ever seen in my life. That's because he only ever goes on Richard and Judy and Sooty. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> to what was Tony Blair referring in 1997 when he admitted it hasn't been handled well, it shouldn't have come out in dribs and drabs? <laughs> David. This is the Bernie Eccleston thing. Right. Uh, he gave a million mm. pounds to the Labour Party 
and the Labour Party mysteriously agreed that Formula One would be exempted from the ban on advertising, ban on advertising mm. for cigarettes um, and then gave him his million pounds back. But unfortunately, this all came out in little bits because the press was incredibly irresponsible about it. And if only it had been published all at once, Mr Blair wouldn't have been in such deep shit. And uh, how much did the Conservatives claim that Eccleston uh, previously donated to them? <coughs> Paul and Dave. Two million pounds. Fifteen quid. Twenty-five <laughs> quid. Four thousand six hundred. Uh, higher, higher. Four thousand six hundred. <laughs> Um, eight million pounds is the lowest estimate. Um, mm. Although we should point out that Eccleston actually denies giving the money uh, to the Tories. And in the interest of balance, uh, how much did he give to the Lib Dems? Nothing. That's right. Yes, he's not, <laughs> not, not quite that stupid. No. Not but which stupid. in the context, in the context of their finances, was quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> And finally, uh, only three months after leaving Northern Ireland, Mo Molum had her armed bodyguards withdrawn. Uh, how long were some of her predecessors allowed to keep theirs? Still are, for life. For life, yeah. Yes, the longest so far is about 27 years, that's Lord Mason. But rest assured, uh, Mo Molum is more than capable of dealing with anyone uh, foolish enough to target her. Which, uh, happy memories, I mean, at the end of this brief term, the two teams are both at one, level as they are on ten. And there's a woman in the front row knitting. <laughs> it's not that the programme's dull. <laughs> when the broom goes out tomorrow, will he be wearing the jumper? No. <laughs> I think she's just waiting for someone to be beheaded. <laughs> Um, round three is what we call the odd one out round, uh, one per team this week, and Paul and David get what we call the first question. Michael Portillo, Chris Smith, Archie Norman and Anne Widdicombe. Hmm. Michael Portillo <laughs> did have gay relationships when he was young. Homosexual experiences. Homosexual experiences. We don't know if that was with a homosexual, but he had experiences <laughs> that were of a homosexual nature. Right. With whoever. With whoever, yeah. Chris Smith did also, and hopefully still does. So we're choosing between the other two here. We don't know if Anne Widdicombe did because it's impossible to say what sex she actually is. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody actually knows. Nobody knows. Mm. She did write a book called The Clematis Tree and Clematis sounds incredibly like... It wasn't Clematis, it was Clematis. Clematis? Oh, you think that's better than you? Point. Oh, he's making a point. So right, no, okay, I've read yeah, that book. It's rather good. Yeah. Arch I so, <laughs> Archie Norman is a bit of a gay name. Mm. Isn't it? <laughs> it's the sort of name. It's two about men's names, isn't it? Two yeah. men together. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Archie and Norman. So, no, no. Another possibility. Widdicombe's definitely a Catholic. Portillo must have been brought up in Catholicism. Spanish. It wouldn't yeah. at all surprise me if Archie Norman was a Catholic. But Chris Smith is actually an ordained Anglican vicar. Is an excellent answer and also completely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> What's she holding up there, Anne Widdicombe? Some starched item of underwear, perhaps? <laughs> Could be almost anything. You read her book, didn't you? Yes, you quite liked it. Yeah, I thought it was very good. Clematis tree. Clematis. No, Clematis, I think. Right. It's you a said, flower. You said Widdicombe's bleak meditation on suffering is a pleasure to read. Yeah. <laughs> Have you been drinking that night? <laughs> <laughs> what I actually said was, compared to a novel by Edwina Curry, uh. Anne Widdicombe's bleak meditation is a pleasure to read. It was a comparative. Right. Do you know what Edwina said about Anne Widdicombe? She said, uh, at some time, something mineral entered her body and something animal came out. <laughs> like Perrier and a, and a horse. <laughs> <laughs> What's the clue? Give us a clue. Um, it's something you might expect of Gordon Brown. Um, he's only got one eye. <laughs> and he's Scottish. <laughs> Too mean to have two eyes. <laughs> Yeah, it's about, terrible. Um, <laughs> he had the option, the same as everybody else. <laughs> I don't think I'll bother with that. Thank you very much. <laughs> we'll get letters. Um, <laughs> At least I'll be able to read them properly. I don't know. <laughs> Chris Smith. Chris Smith has got one out. Uh, no, I'm going to give this to you. We've picked everybody else, haven't yes, we? Exactly. It must be Archie Norman. Mark it is Patillo. Archie. Archie Norman. It is Archie Norman. He won uh, the supermarket. But the yeah. reason is uh, that they all own a ministerial red box, which they're all entitled to, apart from Archie Norman, who's not entitled to, but he's had his own box made anyway. <laughs> so, Anne Widdicombe's got a red box, that's what you're saying? <laughs> 
<laughs> Any dirty jokers in the mind of the audience? I'm simply, I'm simply repeating what you said. Yes. Uh, William Haig appointed ex ASDA chairman Archie Norman to the shadow cabinet after only two years as an MP, although Norman hopes to return the favour, offering Haig a job collecting trolleys after the election. <laughs> uh, Ian and Dom, William Haig, Alvin Stardust, Simba and the Wombles. Is this public information? Uh, Wombles were obviously keen on picking up litter. Alvin Stardust did a green cross code thing, crossing the road, saying to these young children, you should cross the road properly. Mm -hmm. but... Is that Simba from The Lion King? From The Lion King. Is it well, that William Haig animated. is the only person who's given out public information that no-one is interested in? <laughs> <laughs> is Mike Bat involved in this? Oh. We'd like to explain. Yeah, Mike Bat, who made the music for the Wombles, mm. has written the new Tory anthem, Heartland, and he may have done one of the songs for The Lion King. I bet he's probably written, written it. Or he's, or he's written something for Alvin Stardust. I think The Lion King might be the odd one out. Yeah, I don't think he's written anything for The Lion King. OK, so it's... rather good. So, it's, so, it's, so, so <laughs> Simba's the odd one out, because Mike Bat didn't mess that up. Is the right answer. Yeah, yeah, very good. Yeah. And, uh, of course, the Wombles, yes, Mike Bat famously wrote for. Who can name the original seven? Of Bulgaria. Good. Orinoco. Yeah. Uh, um, Madame Cholet. Mm -hmm. The Republic um. of Kazakhstan. <laughs> <laughs> Bungo. Tobamori. Very good. Um, Tobamori. I know this because it's the first album I bought. Is that true? It is very true. What was it called? The Wombles. <laughs> How did they come up with that time? I don't know, it's just it's crazy. Good it was just before punk, so... Mm. <laughs> it's what caused punk. <laughs> it is. <laughs> and do you know who the new lot are? Three new Wombles have been added to the ITV series. Um, Sporty Womble. Telly Womble. <laughs> There's Stepney, who's an uh, inner-city Womble on exchange. <laughs> Urban Womble. Urban Womble. Uh, Alderney, who's a girl Womble, uh, concerned with water pollution. Uh, and there's Shansi, who's a Chinese girl womble who collects rare plants. Wimbledon's really changed, hasn't it? <laughs> In the 70s, the Wombles picked up four gold discs, and not for their music, they were just lying around Wimbledon Common. Uh, one of Mike Batt's many uh, commissions was to write Germany's 1998 World Cup song, which roughly translates into English as Football's Coming Home My Ass." <laughs> Uh, which uh, rapid decomposition means at the end of this dirge, it's uh, Ian and Dom who need a minor miracle behind as they are 1210. Uh, so the margin of just two points renders this final missing words round virtually exciting. A uh, half hidden display of lesser spotted headlines, including many or not from this week's guest publication, the hugely informative Bison World. <laughs> Uh, a particular favourite with uh, American cattle ranchers or Cockney plumbers. So, to your marks for Ich bin ein what? German. Nine. Mm. Bison. <laughs> it is from Bison World. Bison farmer. Uh, almost. Bison rancher, yes, is the right uh, answer. Yes. <laughs> bison. This is a bison expert who lived in Germany for six months. Yeah. Uh, next, Florida passes sentence on notorious what? Bison. Criminal. No, it's not quite. It's a slightly Tortoise. more oblique. Tortoise, you say. Go Chad. Uh, Chad is the right answer. <laughs> Chad's very good. Uh, this harks back to the American election, of course, uh, when the inability to fill in a simple form correctly led to George Bush running as president. <laughs> uh, next, Girl Scouts and what? Brownie points. <laughs> Bison, bison, uh, bison time. <laughs> oh, bison badges. <clears throat> bison badge is the right oh, answer. Oh, well done. <laughs> yeah. That's, That's for shooting them with an arrow, skinning them and making a tippy. <laughs> a tippy. Quite a tough a tippy. <laughs> a tippy. A tippy. A tippy with clematis all round it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, next, there's a hole in what? Gibraltar. My shoe. My bison. President Scots. Kennedy. Um... <laughs> Probably accurate, but um, not the right answer. The mall is, in fact, uh, what there is a hole in. Uh, next, Richard and Judy poached what? In cheap sherry. <laughs> From ITV or for Channel 4? Uh, by Channel 4, yes, mm. is the right answer. Uh, of course, where they're set to front a nighttime topical show reacting to news events. That'll never work. <laughs> <laughs>
No. <laughs> uh, next, Bob Pickering's what? Affair with Bison goes wrong. <laughs> Why finds out about Bison? Uh, it is from Bison World. That's why I keep saying Bison. He yes. is a Bison. <laughs> Bob Pickering is a Bison. He's not a Champion Bison. bison. Uh, Marries yeah. Bison. <laughs> Kills Bison. Bob uh, Pickering's Bison World. Bison give, Corner with gives Bob birth Pickering. To bison. <laughs> he uh, prize winning. Something to do with winning a <laughs> yeah. Bison contest. Yeah, he's won a Bison and a raffle. Loses Bison. <laughs> um, bison Bookshelf is, in fact. <laughs> The answer. Um, this cool. is the part of Bison's World entitled Bisonabilia. Uh, <laughs> and finally, a study finds Bison healthier than what? Bob Pickering. Ted Heath. <laughs> Bob Pickering, he's not been feeling well, he's got a cough. Uh, neither of these things. Uh, Usual. The, um, <laughs> um, soy is quite simply the answer. What? Healthier than soy? Yes. <laughs> uh, this is according to Dr Todd Runstadt. Yeah, hey, he's, he's been discredited. <laughs> He's there. been superseded by Bob Pickering. Bob Pickering's my man. <laughs> Which, uh, criminal waste means that at uh, the end of this sentence, this week's uh, Ronnie Biggs are Ian and Dom with 13. So this week's Mr Biggs are Paul and David with 15. Well done. So, uh, the best of luck to our winners, uh, the best of uh, wombles to our losers. Uh, but you've already got I've it, got haven't you? I've got that one, so, yeah. yeah <laughs> Uh, but before we uh, let them completely off the hook, uh, the bloodletting that accompanies our caption competition... Bob Pickering on holiday... <laughs> on yachting holiday, spears underwater female trombonist. <laughs> blood, blood. <laughs> it's not a trombone. I know. And it's, <laughs> it's not a spear, it's not Bob Pickering, <laughs> it's not a <bone. laughs> I was just getting round to the I'm tuba diving joke. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, terrible. Have you got round to it now? <laughs> no, I thought I wouldn't it? bother. Yeah. 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 Somewhere in the middle of the London Philharmonic Orchestra, there's a bloke trying to get a tune out of a scuba diving kit. <laughs> 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 On which uh, astute note, we say thank you to our panellists, Ian Hislop and Dom Jolly, Paul Merton and David Aronovich. And I leave you with news that Martin McGuinness's gardener regrets trying to plant some root vegetables without permission. <laughs> In Cumbria, police warn motorists about picking up a dangerous group of hitchhikers. <laughs> After several years out of the public eye, Virginia Bottom League is up to hit the campaign trail. <laughs> and in London, the tension is unbearable as election fever sweeps the nation. <laughs> Good night. Sides are still intact, beware. More acerbic jousting from Messrs Hislop and Merton is on the way in just a few moments. Here on the UK TV documentary.